Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here for July 1936, United States and China KMT turn. Pretty simple builds here. For USA, they have a whole whopping six bucks. So strategically for the U.S., they need to buy, they need tech rolls. I just mentioned in my strategy how important technology was for the U.S. So we're going to spend two bucks a turn minimum on tech rolls until July 39 when we're going to spend probably eight bucks a turn. Um, and then, so all the U.S. can really do at this point is probably build up its infantry class units, maybe artillery class. So we're going to buy a standard Marine here for the U.S. just to have some of those rated. We know the U.S. is going to need a lot of Marines in this game. U.S. can't take anything that it doesn't basically amphibiously assault. So we'll build a, a, a Marine and a tech roll for the U.S. Probably put this guy somewhere on the Pacific side of the map. And then China KMT will build two infantry. And I've got some interesting ideas for how China KMT is going to do some moves here. But let's do this tech roll for the U.S. first. And if you remember, U.S. took uh, one on heavy bombers. So they're going to keep going for that one. So they need nine or, plus, nine or higher to get heavy bombers. So let's see if they can get that. Pay that to the bank. And nine or higher heavy bombers. Four. That's a fail. So there's no combat moves. Um, I talked about KMT. It's tempting to think that the KMT might attack the Chinese CCP. They're not going to be able to do that this round. I got some moves here for them in non-combat that may help them with that. But let's do some U.S. non-combat moves first. I don't have a ton. Uh, I'm going to move this guy up to San Francisco, this light tank. Join that guy. Um, and probably move this guy down here to San Francisco too. Um, going to move these three guys down here. And uh, I think that's all I'll do as the U.S. player. These guys will probably move back at some point, but not right now. And now with the KMT, here's the thing with the KMT. They're going to be attacked by Japan at some point. Japan is going to use its massive air force. And I think most importantly for our consideration right now, all these battleships, heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, destroyers, they can all shore bombard all of these coastal Japanese areas. And some of these are also not mountains. So I think it makes more sense for Japan, China KMT to do a couple of things. I don't think they want to put a ton of units into these territories here. They want to keep as much as they can here. Right now, this is the only place they can receive Lin Lease once they can once they're at war with Japan. But if Japan wants that, they're going to take it. And it's really not going to be until the Burma Road is open, which is down here, that China is going to be able to receive Lin Lease. So. What we're going to do is we're going to set up blockers in a lot of these coastal areas. And um, what interestingly, what I really want to do is leave a blocker here, blocker here, move two of these guys back to here, right there. In this mountain territory. Um, and then I think I got four infantry here. I'm going to move one. I'm going to leave three there. And I'm going to rail move. I can rail move one guy. Oh, you know what? There's, oh, are you kidding me? There's no rail into there. Well, there goes my plan. Uh, I'll just move him to here instead. Um, and what I want to do is I want to build this up as much as I can. If I have an option of attacking the CCP in the next couple of turns and eliminating them, that gets me a victory point. 
And um, so I, I moved two guys into here. And guess what? I'm going to put my other two infantry in there too. And I just want to make the CCP sweat a little bit. Um, you know, most of the games of this that I see, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that KMT and CCP sign a truce. I'm kind of a guy that I don't like foregone conclusions in game lo games like this. If I can make them sweat and think about it, I want to do that. And if I can get a victory point by eliminating these guys, I want to do that. Because guess what? China's, Japan's probably just going to wipe me out. And I'm not going to get any of, my, any of those two victory points that require me to expel foreign influence or retake mainland uh, these Chinese territories up here. The only one that's within my grasp right now at all is taking out the CCP. And I'm in a civil war with these guys right now as well. Plus, guess what? I see these Soviet planes coming in here. That kind of requires the truce. So, um, I want the option of taking these guys out, if I can. And um, I'm going to do everything I can to take those guys out right now. Or at least project the threat of being able to take them out. So that's all my non-combat moves um, with uh, the U.S. and with China KMT. So now I'm going to place units. So I'm going to pick up this U.S. Marine, pay these four bucks to the bank. Come over here, and I'm going to plop this guy down here at the major factory in San Francisco. And then, see here, I've got, and let me check something real quick. Okay, I can place up to three infantry per turn in any KMT-controlled territory. So you can see here, I've got these handy chips. And as I said... What I am going to do is put these guys down here in this territory right here. And I've got four infantry and a militia there. And uh, communists may think I'm coming for them. So let's uh, collect income. I think this is going to be pretty simple. U.S. gets six, and the KMT gets six. So, six for the U.S., six for the KMT, and then the victory objectives. Let's look at this first for the KMT. Um, expel foreign influence. Reclaim China and defeat the communists, that is zero. And then for the U.S., bear with me here, please. I think the U.S. is going to get a bunch. So for the U.S., let's show this here. Monroe Doctrine will be one. Contain Fascism, zero. Contain Communism, one. Pacific Security, twice as many capital ships. U.S. has two capital ships. Actually, Japan would probably get one for that, so I need to change that for the Axis. Let me check that. Never mind, this one only relates to the U.S., um, so they don't. The um, U.S. has two battleships in the Pacific, and Japan has three battleships and a carrier. So that's still with two. Uh, all territories, yes, is three, and technological superiority, nope. So the U.S. gets three, or has three right now. So let's come over here, and that's a three, and that's a ten. So you can see how the game starts definitely in the Allies' favor. Um, and right now, common turn zero, Allies ten, Axis one. So it's definitely up to the Axis to push the envelope in this game. So that is the first turn in this awesome game. Man, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this first turn, July 36. Uh, this is a much uh, better, richer game than Axis and Allies. No criticism of Axis and Allies whatsoever. I love that game. I'm just making a comparison. 
Uh, I've enjoyed this first turn. There's many more choices in this game. Um, there is more complexity, of course, but also more choices. And I love the build-up here and how you basically get to decide uh, your long-term strategy, how you want to build, so that in 1938, 39, 40, when you go, um, you're going your way, uh, not necessarily the historical way. So, All right, that is US and KMT, uh, July 36, and that is the completion of the July 36 turn. Hope you all enjoyed. I know I did. Admiral Seabass signing off.